coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the uh, to the film festival for having us and having our films and all the filmmakers here. I wanted to uh, thank, say thank you to Charles and to Susan from the uh, Rhode Island International Film Festival, to Flickers, and for all their hard work. They put a lot of time and energy into uh, getting films from around the country and around the world to be here in Providence. So uh, hopefully the audiences will continue to come out, not just this year but next year, etc. So Ben Yusuf and I we started developing the. Uh, the screenplay story first, and then develop the screenplay after. It took uh, about a year to do that. That was the most critical time of, uh, of pre-production developing the film, because once we actually completed the script and we moved into pre-production, that thought process had to stop, because it then became technical. So for the first year, all he and I did was constantly discuss where we were on the line of uh, his safety and also his character, what his character was exactly portraying and saying and how it would be perceived to different audiences, whether um, a right-wing fundamentalist Muslim or a left-wing Christian. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we were in balance with everything and um, I feel and he feels that it is portrayed in that way. His life uh, today hasn't changed uh, much other than being more positive a lot of people that are Muslim or non-Muslim have come up to him after the film and have uh, reached out to him via social media in thanking him for uh, his performance and for doing such a, a brave um, role portrayal in opening a dialogue that is basically not discussed. So cinema, in uh, both their case and in our case, it does have the potential to speak and have a voice um, for ideas that are usually not welcome in society or just not accessible in society. So um, I hope it's a, it's a ground check for their film as well as ours and just to have people communicate and have a, a cross-cultural dialogue and in their case a uh, cross-musical dialogue. So um, that's the, the motive of the film and the idea of coexistence is prevalent and we hope the film gets that message out there. Much of the uh, Ali character was actually taken from Cold War studies of uh, sleeper cells and how they lived in the United States in the uh, 50s and 60s into the 80s. There's a lot of study in that. There are a number of little flashpoints in the United States within the last uh, 10, 15 years of basically either homegrown or Muslim fundamentalist terrorists that are living in the United States and having like a dual life. Um, the FBI has done a phenomenal job of squashing those stories and removing them from the public record for their own reasons. So it's, it's usually a, a one-page article in a newspaper and then you won't see a study on it. Um, and those people just kind of disappear and they go to Guantanamo. So there isn't much um, information out there other than what you can find in little bits and pieces. But during the course of developing the film and writing it, there was a, numerous cases out of, uh, mostly out of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, some in San Diego, and I think uh, one in Denver. Uh, the most famous one that always rings a bell, and I always remember, is a female. Her name was uh, Jihad Jane, <laughs> and that was on the, on the papers for about a week, and then she kind of went away. But um, yeah, they, she happened to be American, but most of them were from other countries, and they integrate either as students, it's the easiest visa to get, not anymore, but seven years ago it was very easy. So getting a student visa, uh, student visa from anyone in the world is pretty simple. So long as you're an academic and you can prove you have good grades, et cetera, they, they don't screen that hard. So that's, that idea came from that. Um, so we took our character and a student and brought it that way. So basically out of newspapers and, um, and Cold War studies from the 70s and 80s. That was the, uh, the character development. Any other questions on the Algerian? <coughs> well, what's the reason why they, they asked them to stay away from the mosque? I understand the women part of it, but. Because he was, uh, he was essentially taken away from the normal um, religious path of a Muslim, a good Muslim, and he was radicalized. So radical imams don't want their pupils listening to what they consider moderate but what is really like the normal path 
what's taught in the Quran. So um, I'm not Muslim, but this is basically um, social studies, etc. So that's that's the reason why the two main the two main things he tries to keep away from, like when you leave here, to not get deprogrammed. Don't do these two things, and he does those two very things. Even though he doesn't go to a mosque, but his mosque is basically at the beach where he's speaking to the the solid, you know, the positive imam who basically gives him in non-religious terms, um, the right path, and helps his moral compass go into a straight road. And, and the females are females, very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> there's also a law enforcement part of that as well. Just being from New York, uh, there's no, uh, I guess, no question anymore that law enforcement, they heavily monitor yep. uh, people that go to the mosques, and uh, they do surveillance there, and from there, back and forth. Any other questions? So thank you for coming out.